Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I am delighted to be joined from LA to Oxford, England, amazingly, uh, with a team with, uh, from On Wedlock Edge. It's a fantastic film. So delighted to have Jeremy and Dan with us. But for those that haven't seen it, let's take a look at the clip. Uh, Jeremy, Dan, so good to have you here, and 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 thanks so much for bringing your film to us. Uh, I have so many questions, and it's it's such a joy to be uh, reunited with Oxfordians right here as well. What a rarity uh, at New Filmmakers LA. Um, just for those that haven't seen your film, that may be watching this, uh, if one of you want to take it, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. So um, the film is about an old man called Edward. Um, uh, really sort of reliving his past. We start in London and then he sort of goes back through his mind, through his memories into his youth in Shropshire, which is this really rural part of uh, England. Um, very beautiful, but quite sort of isolated. Um, and it's really his sort of struggles with his, his relationships as he sort of um, was a young man, both with, um, with friendships and friendships that had almost become relationships and then his relationships, um, his more sort of involved romantic relationships. Um, and it's an old man reflecting on this and these these struggles and um, trying to come to terms with them and finding a way of letting go perhaps of some of the more troublesome experiences he had in his life. I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's a beautiful film to watch and I, I was kind of captivated by the animation, uh, by the score, just by the journey of how he was feeling. I, I, I was just surprised how moved I was at just every intricate moment. It was really powerful to watch. Um, of course, obviously you directed it and we're also here with Dan as well. Dan, how did you get involved in the project? Well, it's a it, it, the, the whole piece is the whole film is based on a piece of music by Rafe Vaughan Williams of the same title on Wenlock Edge, which is a setting of these six different poems. Uh, by a poet called A. Houseman, which uh, it, th those are poems that I grew up with. I grew up in Shropshire, so all the hills and the landscape that he talks about in the poetry is what the ones I got. I, I grew up being dragged up, uh, and um, so that the that piece of music was very much uh, uh, an inspiration for me. And I've, I've always absolutely loved the piece of music. It's it's scored for. Uh, the tenor voice with a string quartet and piano, and and I am a tenor. I'm a singer. That's that's where I come at this from. Uh, and originally, the concept behind the film was to create a piece that we could screen with live performances. So that's how it started out. And um, we uh, came up with a way of of uh, screening it in live performances, where Jeremy would be in the hall and edit the film live whilst we're whilst we're performing. So. So that uh, the players and myself are not tied to a click track, so that you know, so that we could just perform it as we would in whatever space we were in and in whatever mood we were in, and the film would would be with us. Um, and then we we made a studio recording of the piece, uh, so it 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 seemed crazy not to create a cinematic version uh, of the works for for uh, sort of for showing when it would, when we weren't performing it live. Um, Dan, so I'm, with, I'm with you, Dan, in this in this piece of music was just, I mean, it's, it just stays with you. You know, I, I've watched a film a few times and it, it stays with you. And I actually tweeted you out straight away after I watched it because your voice is amazing. Like you are so super talented. Like you have just a tone that I could listen to all day long. It, it really are amazing. Um, and, and we're going to come back to obviously how, you know, we got to work with Jeremy as well, but, you know, you really just gave us all the heart and emotion of what the character was going through. Um, so, you know, thank you. You really carried it amazingly. Um, Jeremy, I, 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 the style of the animation is like something that I just don't see very often. We don't see particularly, you know, in terms of these subjects and also kind of the length of 
uh, this animation as well. Like when you're going and embarking on, you know, something that's, it's a series of poems and it's, a, you know, it's a very intricate story. Like how do you, how do you go about kind of creating something? Did you kind of know how long it was going to be? Did you kind of know how you want it to kind of flow? And did you kind of know the style of animation you're going to use going into it? So the length was dictated by the recording, by the piece of music. So we knew it was going to be roughly sort of 26, 27 minutes long, which was, yeah. you know, quite a big undertaking. It wasn't, um, yes. uh, you know, perhaps bigger than many other people would make as, as an animation for sort of um, a festival. Um, and so the style of the animation, so it's it's not, it's sort of animation. So all the all the sort of characters and all the motion is done with shadow puppetry, um, which is uh, filmed and then composited with, um, with sort of a digital backdrop. So it's it's sort of a blend of, I suppose, live manipulation and um, and sort of animation. Um, so and it, and the great thing about that is, although it's a very it's quite a long piece. Um, the fact that everything is filmed live actually makes the process much quicker than if you're sitting down and animating frame by frame. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Um, in terms of why we chose that style, it um, I'm primarily a puppeteer, so it sort of works with what I do. But um, I really like it because it is it's quite a, it's quite a limited aesthetic, which really forces you to make sort of quite clear choices about. Um, who your characters are going to be, what they're going to look like, how they're going to be able to move in the piece. And so the it's much, there are things that probably you can't do with it that you could do with, you know, if you're making Pixar and you're making a wonderful 3D animation. But um, I like that limitation. It, it forces you to tell the story in a particular way, um, which I think really suited this piece, which um, has a slightly sort of archaic feel to it. And um, again, the sort of, uh, that sort of silhouette style sort of suited that, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, the thing is, is that, I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're, you're a puppeteer, so that's, that's your background, but I'm always moved at how powerful shadow um, puppetry is. It's always, I'm always surprised how moving it can be and how much you can feel. It's incredible. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you know, thought about this going into it. I know this is obviously based on poems, but I mean, it, you know, it made me cry because I, I you know, as, as a person of the LGBTQ plus community, I never thought I would see uh, an animation, a shadow puppetry in this style, uh, you know, uh, just having a relationship like that with, with someone from, I just never would have thought I would have seen this. Um, was that, I mean, again, I don't know if you go in thinking about that as a puppeteer, but like, it's certainly a rarity to kind of see something. Did you kind of know its significance that it would really show? Because I mean, it was very, very moving. Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of that significance, it's all there in the poetry, it's there in Hauser and his life, and, and it, like, that, that had to be in the film in some way, because obviously the poems, I mean, there's no clear like narrative within them, but in developing that narrative, like there had to be a nod to that sort of, um, well, not a nod, like there had to be the sort of, I suppose the implicit sort of, um, the sort of, I suppose, like almost like homoeroticism that's within Hauser's poetry and within the landscape and the way that he relates to the landscape had to be in there. And to yeah. deny that just wouldn't wouldn't have felt right. Well, I'm mute to you, Dan. Dan, like, listen again. I, I I just part of me as well that I can't. I would love to see this in like a big, huge, you know, uh, sort of uh, church concert hall or concert hall. I'd love to see you perform this because it just felt like it would uh, with an orchestra it'd just be beautiful to experience your voice this story is that something that i mean i know obviously during these times but i mean you obviously something that i'm sure you probably thought about as well and in in, in 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 where you could take the project yeah well i mean that's how it started out actually so uh, we first did it at like that uh and we've done a few performances we've had some which were going to happen and didn't um we had one in december which which fell in a brief window in a sort of relaxation of the lockdown uh, where we did actually put it on in a concert hall in London in King's Place there, which was, and uh, you know, had we had a quite a reduced audience, but it was, um, well, it's very significantly reduced audience, but it was still really, it felt very special because there'd been few, so few opportunities to, to perform live and, and the audience were so, so few opportunities for, for an audience to come and hear something live. So yeah, that's definitely something we, we you know, we, we want to do more of. We've got, we've got more performances in the diary. I mean, unfortunately, there were various ones which we were going to take it to Germany, and that that got cancelled because of a, a pandemic. And um, 
Yeah, but it's quite portable and, uh, you know, it can even be done with just a piano. So kind of in, in that sense, it's a silent movie because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's, it, it's a silent movie done the other way around. Like, you know, you know with silent movies, you have this pianist uh, improvising to, to the, to, whilst they're watching the film, sometimes for the first time. I mean, those guys are amazing. Um, and, and, and this is sort of the other way around. It's like it's, the film is sort of improvising to the music in a way. And yeah, I just like to touch on what Jeremy was saying about that, about the the uh, the kind of homosexual side of the story, um, which I, I find it just incredibly moving, partly because knowing Houseman's story, which is so tragic. I mean, he had such he had this incredible, uh, intense kind of love affair when he was uh, a young man. And, and it was all just kind of squashed and a lid put on it. And uh, there was so much kind of shame associated with it because we're talking, you know, late Victorian times when this is all going on and uh, it was all unmentionable. And so, as Jeremy says, these poems are so simple and that the, the, it's one of the, it's one of the charms of the poetry is it's very, very plain English for the most part. And, um, but it's all there, all this sort of suppressed tension and uh, yes, to find a kind of through story because the poems don't, don't tell a, a through narrative themselves. Uh, we kind of imposed a, a story on on them and, and created a story as a combination of Houseman's life, the poet's life, and uh, the, the the stories that are in the poems themselves. Well, I'm just I'm just curious as well, Dan. What's your process like when you're like you know obviously you're you're probably used to performing to to you know to uh, to an audience, but when you're creating something that is taken from poetry and then you're also in reflection to watching this story like how, how do you do you kind of do you, do you guide do you guide your voice with the with the action that you see how is that process we're always curious uh, so quite interesting for this because um i and especially when when we're doing it live you have to ask yourself about how how do you light the performers I, how do i like myself do i want people to be watching me or watching the film or and i i basically take take the the view for this project that it's that you know that i am the soundtrack and it's, it shouldn't be about uh a direct performance by me it's more that they can hear it going on whilst they're watching the film and so uh but it doesn't really for me it doesn't change the process which which um in singing songs always comes from a uh, looking uh, comes from the text from the poetry and then subsequently to that from what the composer has done with that poetry. And, and sometimes you find yourself, you, you, the composer dictates very strongly what they feel the poem means or what, what, what the implications of the poem are. And, and sometimes that there's a tension between one's own response to the poetry and the composer's response. And um, generally speaking, you have to, uh, you, you have to, you have to channel a composer. You have to find the, the the person yourself that that sees the poem in the way that the composer does. Otherwise, you're not being true to the music. So, yeah, but the process for that is no different, really, uh, for the um, for the for the film than it than 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 it would be for a normal performance. So I, d I didn't I didn't sort of adjust the way I approached uh, the music or the text in that sense. And oh. Jeremy just did such an amazing job of, and he 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 has this incredible ability um, to hear nuance in music and to find the tiniest thing on screen, which really picks it out. Um, at the, our first um, interaction, Jeremy and I, was for um, uh, a film that he made of Schubert's song, El Kearney. Um, oh. Yeah, which has been a really big hit on YouTube. It's had like over 7 million views now, I think. And it was just, it was made as a trailer for a festival and they yeah. used a recording of the song, which I was on. Um, and Jeremy was asked to make the film, and that's how I that's how I first came across Jeremy because because he made this film of, of, of a piece that I'd recorded. And uh, uh, you're super uh, talented, Jer Jeremy. Honestly, you are super talented. I I thank I, you, I, I, I really I, I'm in love with with shadow puppetry, but I've never seen it in this way. I've never felt so moved by just a you know just the journey. I mean, the, the like you know Dan was saying, you just got these really fantastic intricate details to even just when he's kind of out of breath and thinking like I just there's just so many moments there when he's just sitting there and you can feel his life's reflection so let's not underestimate this is a long animation you know it's even it's not quite a feature but it, it's on the way to be and you've got to tie it in with this music you know with the, with the music and honor the poems and the score and and everything 
like how, what was the biggest challenge for you in in in, in creating this project because there, there must have been a few i'm sure you're you know very skilled but there must have been a few in this particular one um i think i think initially the biggest challenge was just was to find to find the half of the piece that would sort of make sense as make sense you know across the the, the six different poems um and for me i think when i really found for me what really sort of brought us together was the sort of sense of um the sort of tragedy of 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 things lost because they weren't reached for they weren't experienced that you things that were never were never were because they couldn't be or because they were denied in some way and that and that came through very much in edward's relationship with his friend albert yeah. um and that's a, yeah that's um finding i think finding that and that and realizing their relationship was sort of key to the whole piece um mm -hmm. was uh re i think once you got to that once you got to there then the sort of rest of the story came um yeah. in terms of making it like um designing the characters the puppets is something I, I love doing but just the, i mean just the sheer it, i mean creating the sort of the visual journey was a was a huge undertaking and getting through that initial sort of storyboarding process getting a sense of actually how visually this is going to this is going to flow um because it is a visual storytelling medium that um there's no dialogue so um everything has you know is that suddenly this actually everything's got to be told through um little little um uh, motions little interactions between the characters and and with the uh, the landscape so um I, I yeah really the biggest challenge for me was the, the sort of conceptual challenge of what is this about what 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 can this be about um and finding that you know realizing that relationship um and then the the sort of visualization of that how can we tell that story um in a way that through this medium which is is so limited so in, well so quite limited um yeah I, I, I honestly I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. I thought I'd miss a moment because I, I realized the detail that you put into it, and you know, and and and, and same with you, Dan, as well. Every, every you know, your 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 voice really carried so much emotion uh, of his history and everything. It was a really remarkable experience. Listen, I hope this gets to go as to Germany and all these places. I I think one of the things that I also you know, again, sometimes we. The story is so powerful. In your case, it really is that I'm, I'm really thinking about the story. And I think sometimes, particularly, uh, you know, in this day and age, in, in this sort of, you know, LGBTQ plus community, we always forget kind of like the people, well, we try, we should always remember the people that have fought for where we are today. And, and, and never forget that. And, and sometimes, you know, the, 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 the community that have really fought for where we are today, you know, should always be, you know, thanked and appreciated and loved because we wouldn't, people wouldn't be there today without people that have fought for us. And then this other journey of going back to the Victorian times of how it could possibly be, we can may never forget what it used to be like and where we are today. Um, and that's why I feel like your film should just go everywhere to remind people and tell this wonderful story. Is that kind of something along the lines that, you know, you wanted to share and explore as well? Because I think yeah. it's... Yeah, no, definitely. I think, I mean, for me, I, I basically grew up in an evangelical cult. So um, anything approaching um, LGBT, L, uh, yeah. LGBTQ plus is, uh, is a, um, is, uh, I don't know, I, it, it's, I suppose in this film, like anything I can, this is like almost an act of atonement in some ways, or yeah. like um, or reaching out. So it's, um, I, it, it became very important for me that this was a, this was a feature part of the film. And yeah, and I think that historical perspective that, we really mustn't forget, you know, yeah. the difficulties yeah. that people had in the past. Um, yeah. Did you, you kind of like, again, is that another reason you feel as well that it could be sort of a good resignation to a lot of people? I think it as well as being a great story. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's, um, I think those resonances, I, I think hit home with people, right? You know, they, they see that and they, and they can, you know, they, they see the, just the sadness of just, of just something which could have been in another situation could have been wonderful and, and wasn't because, it wasn't, it couldn't be, it wasn't, you know, permitted, it wasn't allowed within that moment. Um, well, yeah. I'm, so, I'm so glad that, you know, you both m made this story and, and, you know, and, you know, God, God bless him who, you know, is, is passed away, but here you both are celebrating this story and it's, it's, it's truly remarkable. Um, now, obviously you're a great dream team here. So what is next for you both together or individually? Uh, Dan, well, you go ahead. Yeah, we're 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 kind of in the middle of working on um 
a really fun project actually it's uh it's a toy theater Ooh. production of a children's opera what? uh which is a film version. So essentially this is a project from the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, which wow. was uh, to take uh, an opera, like a children's opera in foreign languages into primary schools. So the first stage of this was this, this was the version in French and it's the chicken licking or henny penny story. I don't know if you know that where chicken, yeah. an acorn falls on the chicken's head and she thinks the sky is falling in. She goes around gathering all the birds to go and see the king. Uh, and the fox lures all the birds in and and, uh, and and feeds them to to his children. And uh, the, the 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 children's play the birds, and they are also this fantastic chorus of little uh, baby foxes at the end, uh, just setting the table to eat the birds. Um, and uh, so we 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 we've done a, a, like a a sort of proof of concept section of this film and then we're kind of going ahead and making the rest of it in the over the next couple of months uh jeremy is going to have his uh probably three months i don't know but the the yeah. <laughs> jeremy's certainly gonna have his work cut out cut out over the next literally his cutting out work cut out uh for the uh <laughs> for the next few weeks um but it's 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 great fun it's a it's a really lovely lovely project um and very different to one when location and, and lovely to see uh jeremy's work in from in front, as it were, you know, we've seen the shadows before, but now now we're seeing uh, color puppets, puppets in color, and like all the detail on the puppets as well. You can see so, it, and and uh, it's very, it's 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 joyous, it's joyous work. I can't wait to see that one, Jeremy. You have got your work cut out for you, so yeah, I, I have. <laughs> this sounds amazing, though. Yeah, it's a very different different um, style in some ways to On My Own and Subject Master said so it's. Um, it's quite a silly film in many ways, um, but it's it's great fun. It's got lots of comedy in it, um, uh, great um, characters. And again, because it, because we're doing some music, uh, there's lots of opportunities for putting in sort of um, inserting sort of visual elements, visual gags that you know aren't, aren't there. So it's uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Uh, in the long run, it should be available in several different languages. There's going to be a German version, Spanish, French, and English. So. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Well, obviously, when you've got a good team, keep keep doing winning things, um, because clearly, you know, both of you, I mean, thank you so much for bringing on Wedlock Edge to us. <laughs> and a joyous, yeah, another one, another person agreed right there, Jeremy. Yeah, 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 a little shout out there. <laughs> a little <laughs> shout out right there. Uh, no, listen, thank you both so very much. It's been great. I, I can't wait to come to Oxford and have a pint when we're all open again. Um, but best wishes with this project, and, and thank you for bringing your home to us. So thank you both. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks for having us.